Hey, hello everyone. Happy Thursday and welcome along to this week's deep dive where we are going to take a closer, deeper look at the user management available for admins within Sendable. Uh, so my name is Marcus. I'm based in London in the UK and I am a customer success specialist here at Sendable. I will be joined by my lovely colleague, Farinaz, who has just popped into the chat to say hello to everyone. Uh, so good morning, Jake. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, depending on where you are calling from. All right, excellent. So for those that haven't been here before, just to give you a guide. Um, you have me here. And then to the right of me, you're going to see a few tabs. So we've got the chat tab where a couple of people have said hello. And to the right of the chat tab, we have a questions tab. So we do welcome questions. Um, so if you have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to enter them in that questions tab. And we will try to get those answered for you. OK, so for those that haven't joined us before, um, we like to have a icebreaker where we can kind of get to know each other a little bit better. This week's icebreaker is going to be based around the pandemic. Uh, lockdown in London is almost over. So next Monday, we are now able to go and get our hair cut. The ladies can go and get their hair done and their nails and everything. So it's really exciting. I want to know from the guys in the session, what is the first thing you are going to do when all of these restrictions have been moved? Are you going to run to the pub? You're going to hug your best friend? I don't even know if we're allowed to shake hands again anymore, but um, let me know what it is that you are going to do first. And while those answers are coming in, I will start to share my screen. sit in a pub garden with five friends and a huge glass of wine. Okay, Zoe, that sounds so good. Oh, my passport is ready, Rebecca. I can't wait to uh, go to a beach or even uh, somewhere with some snow. Ski ah, see, Albie, we just said it exactly at the same time. <laughs> I've not been into a mountain for about two, three years now, and I really miss it. Okay, so while, please keep those coming in, give me some ideas. But everyone should now be able to see my screen. And uh, as you know, once we log into Sendable, we are going to land into the priority inbox. But for those administrators in the, in the room, I want you to, uh, we're going to basically focus on the manage users section of the app. So that can be accessed via the drop down on the right hand side, manage users. And also on the drop down on the left hand side, manage users. So we'll take either of these options and we'll navigate over to where the users are listed. So there's a few things that I'd like to cover um, with the users. Um, first, um, kind of how the users are set up and the different hierarchies that you may see. Uh, you know, the, uh, the state of the user, whether they're active or inactive. We will talk about the three different profile types, so the administrator, the team member, and the client. And then we have recently run a permissions deep dive, um, but we'll discuss a little bit about uh, the permissions as well. So the way that I want to run this session is I'm going to create a brand new user, and I'm going to give them different permissions throughout the session. Uh, and then I'll log in as that user so we can kind of see the, uh, the effects that is had. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a new user and take you through uh, this form. So um, I'll call it just my company for now. Uh, we will need an email address. So I'll just do Okay, so I've got my email address here. Uh, a phone number is, n is only optional, so I'm just going to skip that part. Now I'm just going to add myself with a username and password. Okay, so once you've set your user up, you do have a permissions tab at the bottom. So uh, once again, we did run a deep dive on permissions. Um, I think Farinaz may be able to post a link to that in the chat. 
But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep my permission set as default. So it gives me access to all areas. Right. So the tab underneath credentials is going to be about the user account. So this is where you can set the type of profile. So as mentioned before, there's three profile types. Uh, let's go backwards. First, you've got the admin. Now the admin can basically access all areas of the app, including the subscription details. So if they ever needed to change the uh, credit card details or add and remove new users, they can do. They'll also be able to access each, each other dashboard. So as an admin, you'll be able to access all of the other users that you can see uh, on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's set up an, an admin. Now, admins can still be managed by other people, okay? So the main admin in this account is this Europe head office. So what I'll do, I'll just make that as the person that manages me. Now, whenever you're setting up a new user or a dashboard, you can assign them with a profile color. So this will appear in kind of the sent items list in the calendar, various different areas throughout. So I'll go and set myself up with the color red, which represents my favorite football team. Okay, so underneath the profile color, we're asking you to reset your session every two to 30 days. Now, the best practice is to reset your session every two days. Now, that basically this clears your sendable cache. And the sender, basically, that means you'll, every two days, you'll, ensure that you're using the most up-to-date version of Sendable. So if we've put any releases out, any fixes, any updates, I wouldn't want you guys waiting any longer than two days to see those updates. So um, please reset your session every two days. Okay, then depending on the package um, that you have, you can set yourself up a workflow. So a workflow is basically saying, does this user have to have their post approved? before publishing. So by default, this is set to no. But if I select it to yes, then I can actually say, okay, who is going to be the person that approves my posts? Okay, I'm actually gonna keep this to no because it's still um, an optional um, feature to get your, your post approved. And then lastly, we have other. Now other is basically referring to custom fields so we ran a deep dive on custom fields two weeks ago, and I think Farinaz will also be able to post a link directly to that webinar as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and save with uh, just the My Company details uh, with the account that's managed by head office. So let me just, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna create this user. And you can see this user is now part of the same hierarchy as the other people that are managed by the Europe head office. So if I look at Paris, for example, you can see that they are also managed by the Europe head office. So because I've selected this as the manager, it's kind of put us all in the same hierarchy. So let me now log in as my company so you can kind of see what that does. So I'm gonna use this option here to sign in as another user and that will just open a new tab where I can sign in as my new company. And please remember any questions, uh, always start to add them into the questions tab, please. Okay, so I've now logged in as my company. So you can see it's got my C here. And because I am an admin, I am able to get back to the manage user section. And I'm also able to impersonate all other dashboards that I have because an admin isn't restricted. They can have access to everyone. So you can see my um, drop down is completely full here. And because I'm an admin, I'm able to go to manage users and I'm able to head to my subscription page. All right, perfect. So now let's say that my company is no longer gonna be a company, it's gonna be a internal team member that may have to manage other brands, okay? So what I'm going to do with my company here is I'm going to edit, and I'm going to change the account type to team member. Now, things to notice is that I'm still gonna be managed by the European head office, 
and I am maintaining that user hierarchy. Okay, so I'm still going to be listed under the European head office. I'm now a team member, but because I've maintained this hierarchy, what this will allow me to do is when I next log in as my company, I should be able to navigate between these dashboards, so London, Paris, and the Europe head office. I should no longer be able to see sort of Asia head office or Tokyo or anyone else. So let's just go and refresh here. Okay, so I'm still in my company. Now, I no longer have access to, to go to manage users or to view my subscription details. Using my drop down here, you can see I don't have that full list anymore. I'm now only be able to um, impersonate those people inside of my hierarchy. All right, so then what happens if we go back and edit my company and we actually say not to maintain that user hierarchy. So I'm still managed by the Europe head office, but I'm not in that same hierarchy. So I'm now gonna be just a team member that's managed by someone. So that means Europe head office can still see my company. But if I refresh over here, I should no longer be able to see people uh, in that hierarchy because I'm we haven't maintained that anymore. Okay, that hasn't quite worked. Let me see what I've done wrong here. Maintain user hierarchy, no. So what I might want to do is just get rid of my manage by here. Okay, so now my company lives kind of on its own. So let's... Uh, Refresh here. Okay, so now when I use my drop down, you can see I can no longer navigate between any um, other dashboards. I'm just sort of set as my own company. Now, if you're not following the hierarchy, you will have the option in the accounts tab to say has access to. So because I currently don't have access to anyone, okay, I can basically now say, okay, I want this uh, company to have access, and then you can go through and say which office. So maybe Beijing and um, and Rome. So two sort of dashboards that were fully outside of my hierarchy. So then I can update the user. And now if I refresh, I should be able to access those other two dashboards because I've kind of overrode uh, those um, permissions there. So you can see I've got my own and Beijing and Rome. So that's all working as intended. Okay, another scenario may be that you are gonna be in the same hierarchy, which means you've got access to um, those people under your manager. But now it says also has access to. So because I'm in that same hierarchy, I'll have access to Paris and London, but now I'm also gonna have access to Beijing, Rome, and, uh, and let's go for maybe Tokyo as well. So I can update the user here, refresh, and then you'll see my drop down on the top left. We'll have a few more options. Perfect. So that's kind of how you can set your users up with um, different hierarchies and access to different dashboards by using the has access to and also has access to. Okay, so I've now, that's a team member that has, is part of a hierarchy that also has access to other dashboards. So what happens if I change this account type to a client, okay? And I'm gonna get rid of these uh, also has access to. So clients by default will not be able to access other people's dashboards, even if they are in the same hierarchy. So if I update this user, you can see my company is in the same hierarchy uh, as Paris, London, and the Europe head office, but their profile type is set as client. So we're not gonna want a client to be able to view other uh, dashboards by default, 
So you can see now when I open my drop down, it's literally just my company until if there's any use case where you'd like your client to view another dashboard, then you would have to say also has access to, and then you could manually give them access to other dashboards if that fits your purpose. Okay, fantastic. Um, I think that is the all I wanted to actually cover. I'm going to invite Farinaz in. Uh, she going to talk about some best practices when maybe an admin leaves the business and also how to delete administrators because as you can see it's very easy for me to uh, delete a team member or a client but it's not possible to delete an administrator so Farinaz will join us and talk us through um, those steps as well. Okay uh, so Farinaz please feel free to join the stage. And uh, for those uh, in the chat, please feel free to um, use the questions tab uh, to answer to ask any questions. We haven't got any questions yet, which is uh, quite a surprise. Okay, hi, Farinaz, are you are you with us? Farinaz from support. So oh, there, you the, are. Thank you. there are a couple of. Um, best practices that I'd like to run through, as well as um, stated statuses with regards to um, team members. So the very first um, option that I'd like to go through at this particular point. So if we head over into manage users and we select the edit option, you'll have an option um, which is called workflow. So the workflow option at the moment, it's only available on the scale and expansion plan. Essentially, what happens is when you have the set to yes, you'll have a little drop down list and you'd be able to select to whom this user is able to actually send the approval to. So in this case, I will be selecting the admin user. And so when we head over into the user, which is Chelsea, so if we're composing a post at this particular point, and we add in some text, and we add in an image as well. So now, at this particular point, we're able to send this for approval, which is known as an automatic approval. Um, and we'd be able to see that she appears in the actual drop down list. Um, so she'd be able to send this post for approval to the admin user. So this, again, to reiterate, it's only available on the scale and expansion um, plans at the moment. And then what I'd also like to look at is um, statuses. So if we have a look at this particular user, we can see if we look at the active status, the active users are all highlighted in green. So this is an inactive user. If we click on edit at this particular point, and we look at the account option, we can see that there are two options which are inactive and active. So this user is currently set as active, uh, sorry, inactive. So essentially what this means is that it's still part of a user allocation. So this user would still basically be billed. However, if we, um, if I were to further um, basically break down the inactive status, what that essentially means is that an admin user has intentionally intentionally um, deactivated this particular user. So when this happens, um, the user, uh, sorry, sorry. So they are inactive, so they will appear as disabled. So the admin would intentionally disable them. Um, and so in cases like these, the only way to reactivate this is to basically have the admin set it back to active again. And then another option um, that I'd like to explain is the 
the customer um, pause option, which would essentially be, so if you head over into preferences and publishing preferences, there's an option to have this enable, so you can either turn it on or off. So when this is when this option is turned off, then that essentially means that the user has pause schedule messages, and that would be under publishing preferences, and so they wouldn't be able to send out any posts because this is basically turned off. Okay. So another option that I'd like to basically um, go through at this particular point, M Marcus would have mentioned that you would have the option to switch into certain dashboards. So if you'd further like to look into preferences, you'll find that there's a little cog window right at the top of the user. So when you click on this little cog window, it will basically take you into the exact same um, preferences, which is notification, publishing, and system settings. So there are a few best practices um, that I'd like to go through or touch on. So in the event that the main user is tied to billing, then essentially what that means is that that particular admin user will no longer. So if we use this one as an example, this is the main admin user, just tied to billing. And so the way we can identify that is there are no options to change this admin to a team member or a client. So in cases like these, if the main admin that is tied to billing either leaves the organization or is no longer available, there's essentially two options. First option would be is because this user cannot be deleted, you'll basically head over into credentials. So you can replace the existing credentials with a completely new admin user's details. So if the new admin is Pam and the email address will change to Pam1 at hotmail.com. And you'll obviously change the contact number. You may set a password as well. And if you update this, then that would basically mean that the new user completely takes over the profile of the admin user who is tied to billing. This is scenario one. Scenario two would basically mean that you do not want to add a completely new user to take over the administrative role of the main admin, but rather you would like to um, have one of the existing either team members or other administrators to take over. So for instance, if you would like Carolyn to take over the position of the main admin tied to billing, what you do is you'd basically move across all the credentials that belongs to Carolyn. So you'll swap over into the main user. You'll change this to Carolyn, change the email address, um, as well as the contact numbers, you may set a password. And what you'd then basically do at that particular point, because Carolyn already had profiles that she's been managing, you now need to ensure that because reporting is also a, a main factor to consider, so you have to then switch over into the user of Carolyn which is the existing user, and you then basically transfer all profiles as well as, so if we switch over into Carolyn and we head into profiles, we can see that the, if she had any profiles or um, you'd basically transfer them over. And the second thing that you'd basically do is if you hit engage and sent, if there are any sent um, messages in the sent view of the dashboard for Carolyn, you'd click on the more option, export everything to a CSV file, and you'll bulk upload it into the new, into the um, admin user who is already existing that you are replacing with cre uh, Carolyn's credentials to ensure that you do not lose that information. Um, so it's profiles and you can go through the list with queued posts as well. So if there are any, you would then again click on export to CSV. So we'll export it to CSV. And then once you head over into the main admins dashboard, you'll bulk upload these into the queued view. 
and you'd go across um, down the list with regards to drafts as well. So once you have everything transferred across, it ensures that you not simply deleting, but you're rather transferring everything across so that you do not um, delete um, or lose any data. So that's a best practice in terms of basically um, having a, ma a main admin removed at that particular point. I do see that we have a few questions. So I'm going to head over into the questions area real quick and have some of those answered. Okay, so the first question that we have is Zoe. Zoe's question is, we are new to Sendable and I want to use the approval process with my client. But yesterday, as soon as he approved posts, they got posted straight to Instagram which I wasn't ready for. Is it possible to use the approval process without it triggering post, uh, posting? So Zoe, to answer your question, when a post is sent for approval, so if we use this ad, as an example, so if I compose a post and let's say i'm used, sending it to the facebook group so i'm going to add test and i will schedule that for a much later date i'm going to send this for approval so let's say i'm sending this for approval to annie lennox this post once it goes to approval if we switch over into the dashboard of Annie Linux. Let's do that. Okay, let's do that again. And I will send it to a different user. And Zoe, while Farinaz does that, it, reading your question, it sounds like maybe you didn't add a uh, scheduled, a future scheduled date, uh, which means once it's uh, approved, uh, it would go live straight away. If you added a scheduled date, then once it's approved, it would just be sort of uh, listed as scheduled and then would go live at that sort of set day and time. So if you could confirm whether a date and a time was set um, when you sent, um, your post for approval, uh, that would help us uh, in answering your question there. Yeah, so we can look into it a bit further for you, Zoe. But essentially, when you do send a post for approval, it shouldn't be posting instantly. It should basically appear in the ta so engaged task view of the person to whom you're sending it for approval. In this case, it's Carolyn. So she'd receive this in her task view. She'll then either click on approve post or reject post. And depending on when the post was scheduled for, it would basically post for that particular date. Maybe this is something that we can look further into with you. Um, so maybe we need to touch base with you after the webinar so that we can further look into that one. Um, there is another question. So let me head back into the questions view. The question is from um, Rebecca Little. So Rebecca's question is, as a client, would would they be able to publish to their social media? So yes, Rebecca, to answer your question, a client is able to post to their social media um, post. So as long as they have profiles added to their dashboard or shared with them and they compose, they definitely be able to um, post to the particular um, from their dashboard. There's no restriction with regards to that. So if I further look into the questions, okay, so it's Zoe. Zoe says, just check the dashboard. My client can see and there are no profiles there. Do we need to set up each profile again for each user? So Zoe, to answer your question, so if you are, if the client is logged into their dashboard natively and you are not logged in as an admin by toggling or switching into their dashboard, depending on what they actually added to their profile, um, to their dashboard as profiles, they would then be able to see that in the drop down list, either when they click on compose or when they 
basically cl click on profiles and my profiles or if it's a profile that an admin or team member has basically shared with a client, then if the client views that under profiles and shared profiles, they should be able to see their profiles in their, um, in their profile list. So it should be visible to them in the Compose box drop down as well as in the Profile Shared With Me drop down. So it all depends um, who, to which dashboard it was added, but either way, the client should have access to it, whether it's been shared with them or whether it's been added to their own dashboard. I hope that yeah. answers your question. We do allow you to add the profile multiple times, but if it's been added once on another dashboard, as Farron has mentioned, yeah, it's quite easy to sort of go and share uh, that profile with the new uh, client or team member that you've uh, added to the dashboard. Farron, are you able just to sort of show that, um, that process so under my profiles and just quickly how they can share yeah sure i can so basically so i'm going to head over into the main admin for a minute so what we can do is so if we head into profiles and my profiles let me remove these and remove these okay so now we're in the profiles list so we have a list of profiles so if I'd like to share this particular profile, either with a client or with another team member, you click on the share option. So there'd be a list of users with whom you may share these with. So you can either select a client or you can select a team member. And this would then become visible. So we can see we added Chelsea. So now if we look at Chelsea, it will appear in shared with me. So if we look at we can see that's the one that we've just basically shared with Chelsea and it's showing in her shared view. Okay, so there's another question that I can see from Rebecca. Oh, no, Rebecca, you've just answered it. <laughs> oh, okay. okay it was, um, it was basically um, she was managing cli um, social media profiles but had to impersonate her client in order to publish. But now you showed how that profiles can be shared with other users. Uh, okay. You totally answered her question, so that's fantastic. Perfect. So I do not see any other questions that's come in. It seems as if we've answered everything and covered everything, Marcus. Excellent, um, excellent. That's uh, always good. And we've only run over by two minutes, which isn't that offensive. So um, I just want to just thank everyone for, for showing up again. I hope you found this interesting. Um, we will be sending a recording out shortly after this session. And um, please join us again next week where my colleague um, Savannah will be back hosting. Um, so we look forward to that and we look forward to having you uh, here again. All right, everyone, uh, any sort of last questions, please feel free to get them in now. Otherwise, I wish you all a good evening and a great day. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks.